hello everyone and welcome back to my channel we are all natural today i thought about filming this video and thought about oh maybe i should get ready and then i was like you know what no i'm feeling comfortable in my own skin and i shouldn't feel like i have to do my hair or makeup when i film these videos because at the end of the day it's all about the content and um, the advice I'm actually sharing. So today's video is one of the most requested videos out of a poll that I did on Instagram. If you are not following me already on Instagram, I will leave the link down below and somewhere on the screen. Um, you can follow me there. I share a lot more about health and wellness stuff there as well and, um, and more anxiety related content as well. But yeah, I put a poll on and asked which video would you would like to see me film most and the number one answer was managing physical symptoms of anxiety shout out to anyone new here my name is julia and i am a wellness coach in training with the international association of wellness professionals and i make content all about managing anxiety self-love productivity and really just going after that life that you want but if any of that interests you, then make sure to like this video and subscribe. It really does help me a lot and I truly do appreciate it. And I would love for you to join me on this journey to more wellness and more joy and happiness. So there are many different physical symptoms of anxiety. The list can go on and on. We don't really realize how much stress and anxiety can actually affect us internally in the body. A lot of the time how we can determine whether it's anxiety related or something else um, is to become aware of our environment and what has been happening um, in our lives within the past, within the short term period or long term? Has it been a lot of stressful situations? Have I felt a lot of stress and anxiety lately? Because becoming aware of our environment and how it's actually affecting how we feel, we can then um, reroute or take a step back and take a breather and go into a different direction that's maybe more restful or less stress so, and see if the physical symptoms can resolve itself. Sometimes all it takes for physical symptoms to release um, is to just slow down. We're always on a go, go, go. And if we're not self-aware of how our environment may be affecting our stress levels or our anxiety levels, we might not realize that the physical symptoms happening to us are anxiety related. I also asked what were some of the common physical symptoms um, people have experienced on my Instagram as well and those are the ones that I'm going to touch on today. So the first one is the ever so popular heart racing. So when we become really anxious a lot of us I think experience uh, our heart rate going up and all we can feel in our entire body and all we can hear is our heart going and it makes us feel out of control like and that we don't know what's happening and it can be very scary and i've also experienced a racing heart is probably one of the most common symptoms that i feel when i experience anxiety and what i have found that works for me is some form of physical activity a lot of anxiety in our body is adrenaline so we're feeling the adrenaline and our adrenaline kicks or jump starts our heart so to bring that down it's almost like we have to release that adrenaline so and the best way to do that is through physical activity so it doesn't have to be anything intense but intensified and something super short can really help that pass really fast another way is just taking a walk taking a breather doing some sort of movement if you're at work or something you can just step up for a second and do some shaking so just shake your body and that releases adrenaline. I like to do that before you know, presentations at work or if I have a really important meeting. This naturally releases the adrenaline in your body and that is what needs to be released when we are experiencing the physical symptom of a racing heart. So I know I received a question from people, well, like how do you do that if it's kind of an in the moment thing? If 
you know your triggers or you can anticipate when you will feel anxiety or you know when a racing heart will come on, doing some sort of physical activity before that can help reduce that racing heart and how long it's happening in the actual moment. So I have a whole video on anticipated anxiety and how to manage that. I will leave that linked down below as well. So the second physical symptom um, that I want to talk about is shaking and chills. So being cold or shaking, you know, sometimes when you can hold your hand up like this and you can see people with anxiety just like their hand is completely shaking. That is me. That is also one of the common symptoms that I have with my anxiety. And something that really helps me with this is a progressive muscle relaxation tool. And uh, basically what you do is you tense yourself up really, really tight. You hold for five seconds and then completely release. So I will contract and relax different muscle groups. So sometimes with my hands, I'll just do this and release. Um, with my shoulders and release. And um, I combine that with breathing exercises and that helps a lot with bringing down the shakiness that I'm feeling and the chills. Another common symptom is stomach aches or nausea. Now, I personally have not experienced too much nausea when it comes to anxiety. However, I have dealt with stomach aches when it comes to anxiety. So something that really helps me um, with this symptom is really taking a breather. So stepping away from work or any responsibility that you have that you can reschedule or just take a day where you can just relax and rest. Um, rest is huge for any type of anxiety symptom. Rest in general is important. So just, I would definitely take a day if I'm not feeling the best, even if I know that it's due to anxiety, but I'm feeling it in my stomach, I will take a break and put myself first. Is a couple of things that could help bring down nausea. So ginger is actually something that naturally reduces stomach aches and nausea. So you can chew on a ginger root. That's why people say to drink ginger ale when you have a stomach ache. You can have a ginger tea. Other spices or I guess scents that help with nausea would be uh, peppermints, lavender, and lemon. So even like putting a few drops of um, lavender in a diffuser. Whenever I'm experiencing high levels of physical um, symptoms of anxiety, I'm even more intentional than I would normally be on the foods and supplements and what I'm putting into my body. Because as we know, food has a huge effect on our mental health. And as I learn more about gut health, I'm starting to see how true that really is like our gut and our mind are so connected that's why we feel butterflies that's why we feel stomach ache when we are anxious so being very intentional about what i'm putting in my body um is very important when it comes to the physical symptoms of anxiety because my goal is is not to never experience these physical symptoms again like i would love to but sometimes that's just not realistic to think that they'll just go away sometimes but being able to move through them quicker is what my goal is i want to be able to move through it as fast as i can so i can get back to uh, my regular state another thing i would say to avoid during this time especially if you're dealing with nausea or stomach aches is to avoid caffeine for the time being uh, caffeine can actually increase our anxiety very intensely so if you're already experiencing high anxiety you do not want to make that worse with caffeine <laughs> um, wait till you're a little bit settled or your anxiety has gone down you're not really experiencing too much of the physical symptoms anymore before you decide to have caffeine again other things to kind of avoid during this time is 
uh, processed foods and alcohol as well. So the fourth symptom is muscle tension. So that can be like tension headaches or just tension in your body. So when we are anxious and stressed, we tend to hold a lot of that um, in our body. So for instance, shoulders are a main one. So if you sit at a desk and you're anxious, you probably notice that you have upper back or shoulder pains a lot. And it's probably because you're not noticing that you're tensing up while you're working or whatever it is. And I do random check-ins when I'm actually at my desk to see like, where are your shoulders? Okay, release. And that has helped a lot just to become aware of how and how I'm storing tension in my body and to kind of give me a trigger to think about what I'm stressed about and what I'm anxious about. Another place we tend to hold a lot of tension is our hips. Our hips and our glutes actually store a lot of anxiety and stress. So how do we reduce muscle tension? And that is simple, that is stretching, but being very intentional about the different stretches that you're doing that are actually targeting the places that you're holding tension. So I do a lot of shoulder opening stretches. So a child's pose, for example, um, is a very good uh, shoulder opening stretch. Another one I would do is kind of like clasping my hands at the back and lifting up. And I'll do that in child's pose as well. Standing up, I'll lean forward, kind of hold that for about a minute. There are a couple more shoulder opening stretches that you can do as well. So one in yoga where you're basically putting, I have no idea what this is actually called though, but you're basically in child's pose, but you move one arm underneath like this. That's a good one. Upward facing dog and baby cobra as well. In terms of hips, so me, I store anxiety in the shoulders and the hips, which a lot of us might. So um, I do a lot of hip opening stretches. So whether that's reclined butterfly or butterfly or um, pigeon pose to help with the, the tension in the glutes. Um, frog, that's another one. Frog? Lizard, sorry. Lizard pose <laughs> is another one. I'm not a yoga instructor, so I don't know the names of all the poses. But uh, lizard is also a great one for the hips. Um, yoga squat, that's another one. And it's funny how you just feel such a release, an anxiety release when you do these stretches. And you feel it almost instantaneously, like there's definitely a difference from when, like before you started stretching to after and what you feel in the body. So it might not get rid of it completely, but it definitely helps. A lot of people might store a lot of tension in their chest as well. Bridge pose is a very good one for this. I find that this one helps a lot um, when I do feel or experience the tension in my chest. I was dealing with natural light and then the natural light went away. So then I turn on the light and it is orange. So, you know, professional YouTuber here. Woo. I think I've got my last symptom I was going to talk about. So I think it's symptom number five, which is shortness of breath or feeling more shallow breathing. So to help with this, we actually have to control our breathing. So we do breathing techniques. So I have a whole video on uh, three different types of breathing techniques that you can do to help reduce stress and anxiety. So I'll leave that linked below. So my favorite is diaphragm breathing. So you're basically breathing from your diaphragm so you're not moving your chest and all you're doing is breathing from um, your diaphragm so you should see your hand on your stomach move up and down but this hand up here stings still. So that one really helps. Another one is pursed lip breathing. There's even just the classic inhale for five seconds, hold for five seconds, and then release, exhale for five seconds. Either one, there's so many different types of breathing techniques that you can do to help trigger your parasympathetic nervous system to calm yourself more naturally. Combine the breathing with a mindfulness meditation 
So I like to do body scan meditations during this time where I'm really just focusing on my body and what I'm experiencing or what I'm, I'm feeling in the body. So it just keeps me very grounded in the present. And I think that's important, especially when we are experiencing anxiety. So breathing and meditation, I would definitely recommend for shallow breathing. I would actually recommend it in general for general uh, anxiety management. Those ones are really good, especially for day to day. The ones that I've mentioned for previous symptoms are specific to that one and what I found personally works best to reduce the symptom the quickest and um, what to actually do in the moment with those specific symptoms as well. But overall, breathing, meditation, those are gonna all help prevent the um, intensity of anxiety that you're feeling in your body. And then I guess another common one that it just triggered in my mind now that I've been doing for years, and this is for a lot of people kind of like a daily habit. So uh, it's not necessarily, I would say a symptom of anxiety because it's not something you necessarily feel. It's just a habit that has been instilled in you. So that's the chewing the nails or picking on scabs or skin. And I think why I want to touch on that is because it's so common with people uh, with anxiety to do these things. So in my personal experience, what has helped me is to kind of have a like a ritual that you do for those areas where you find that you do pick or you do bite. So for instance, I do my own nails and because I take pride in doing my own nails and it takes me a lot of time, I don't necessarily wanna do anything to wreck them. So I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but it has definitely helped. Um, with me to chew my nails less and every time I do paint my nails it is kind of a trigger to remind myself or for me to become self-aware uh, to not chew my nails. Another thing is I used to pick my forehead because I used to get a lot more acne so I made it I was very intentional about finding a routine skincare routine that worked um, so that there was really nothing for me to pick so I have found that routine and I stick to that routine and it is kind of this ritual for me now where I want to keep up with the skincare because I am not uh, picking my skin and it's been helping me so finding little things like that can help you to reduce those habits and just becoming aware of um, when you're actually doing those things and kind of stopping yourself in that moment anyway that is my video on managing physical symptoms of anxiety I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you experience any of the symptoms I mentioned in this video and if you do anything different to help manage them. Thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you all in my next video.